Right, guys, firstly, thanks for coming today. Appreciate it. And guys, thank you everyone for coming today to, uh, to the open day. Hope everyone's enjoyed it. We're going to uh, open the room up and ask questions. So if anyone has a question, please raise your hand. I'll come over to you. We'll ask the question and uh, I'll try and get to as many people as I can. Guys, you have my phones in front of you to share. Play nice. Nope. Right, who would like to go first? Who has a question? <laughs> no one? This is, gonna, this is gonna be a very, very quick QA. Does no one have a question? Come on. <laughs> Genuinely? Yeah. Well, that's a question. Thank you so much. I'm I'm sure um, these gentlemen will definitely sign your shirt afterwards. Definitely. <laughs> Guys, questions? Hey? Yeah, so we genuinely don't have any questions. Not oh, anything that kills. Ah, brilliant. Is it always nervous getting that first question out of the way? Hello, James. Um, Rob, well, we didn't get to Swindon yesterday, but we did go on to you today. Um, John Edwards. How close do you think he's to uh, the first team caller? Um, Johnny Edwards, are... I've worked with Johnny all year um, and also brought him into the club as a number 16. He's, uh, he's an excellent talent. Um, he's progressing, he's developed. Uh, when we took over as a management team, we offered him a, a professional contract for, for next year. Uh, and as long as he keeps progressing and developing and, and most importantly keeps scoring goals as a centre forward, then... Um, then listen, at the right time, we'll introduce him and, and give him his opportunity as what we did do in our first game um, with Harry Anderson against Bradford. We introduced him uh, for the last 15 minutes and, and he was exceptional. Um, and then we've introduced him again and gave him um, a little bit of a taste of a first team football. Um, and Harry Anderson's temperament was excellent and we knew then that he was ready for, for a start. And uh, we'll be doing a going through a similar process with the with the rest of the young lads and, and Johnny Edwards being one of them. But um, I know about Johnny, he's, a, he's an excellent talent and he's one that, that trains regularly with us as the, with, with the first team and um, and he's got to keep scoring goals and hopefully one day he can do that for us in the first team. Well, well you've been around the, uh, the youth team for a long time. you set up the academy. Just how exciting are these group of talent, of all the talent that we have in the youth team at the moment? Uh, they're an excellent. They're an excellent group. Um, you've got Johnny Edwards, who's doing very, very well. Scored 24, 25 goals now this season. Um, you've got Jack Friend, who uh, he's a local lad from Wisbeach, um, who's been playing up front with him, and they both of them complement each other exceptionally, exceptionally well. And the way in which I like to play football, um, they, they've been they've been exceptional. The pair of them throughout the season. Um, but also the service that they've had in the in the youth team this year, um, in terms of from wide areas, from Harry Anderson and and also from Toby Adeboyo, who's been who's been exceptional. So those are the four that, that we've taken um, into the first team group so far. We've still got some decisions to make on uh, on the rest of them, and um, that'll also have uh, obviously a bearing on on what we decide to do next year as a club, whether we have a formal under twenty ones group. Um, or whether we stick with the under 18s and, and, and straight into the first team group. But um, those players are in and around it and in and around the first team on a regular basis and doing really well. And, and obviously, Dion Henry, the goalkeeper, as well. So, um, so yeah, they're a really exciting bunch. And we've got another exciting bunch of, of local players who have been uh, full time with us since they was under 14 at the school uh, alongside the training ground. And, and they've been training full time. Um, for the last three years, and, and there's another exciting batch coming through. Aaron, well, I mean, we're, we're expecting Robin to say that. He built the academy. You, when you first came to the football club many years ago now, I mean, it was a case of we were buying in players constantly. Robin was just setting up the academy then. You've now come back to the club and you've seen, you know, the, the likes of Jermaine Anderson coming in, Joe Newell coming in, Cosie coming in. Uh, what's it been like for yourself personally to come in and see the youth actually breaking into the first team and playing alongside them? No, it's good. It's good to see the young players coming through. You know, like you say, when I first came here, it was us. Obviously, we've been brought in, but we were the young ones who were going to try and help take the club forward. And now, you know, these are the younger ones that have got the challenge now to, to try and do exactly what we did. So it's, it's good, but 
You know, they just need that guidance. You know, I think no matter what what age you are, you still need guidance. And from for myself, we were lucky enough to bring in people like Grant McCann, who who was experienced. You know, we we always had had good players around us that that had been there and done it. And now it's kind of my turn to to try and guide the younger ones and make sure that they can reach the the potential that that have been shown. How, how often do these young players come to you and you know try and get advice from you? Because obviously you you've been involved in such massive games for the football club and a lot of games for the football club, not just here but others. How how often do they come to you to pick your brains and to listen to what you've got to say? Um, quite a lot to be honest. Um, they they want to they want to learn. That's the most important thing. Um, if they didn't want to learn, then they wouldn't be here. Um, we've got a we've got a really good bunch of kids coming through. Even like Robbo says in the under 16s, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of coming through there as well. Um, you know, they've, they've, they've thrived this year. They've done really well under Robbo, under Kane Scarf now as well. They're performing really well. So there's a really good bunch of kids coming through. And if they want to keep learning, they'll do well at this club. Guys, I want to also introduce to the stage Ian Pledger, who is our goalkeeping coach. Uh, a very, very good goalkeeping coach at that. Uh, Pledge, for those who don't know much about you, tell us a little bit about your background. Uh, well... Funny enough, I played with Robbo quite a few years ago when he when he was a quick when he was a, yeah it was a long time ago when when he was a quick player. Uh, no, I I started out uh, actually as a schoolboy at this club, um, then went on to Luton Town when they were in the old first division. So that was many many years ago. Um, had a had a leg break, told I wouldn't be playing again, um, but then went on to play as I say. A light rubber at about 800 semi-professional games. Um, I've been at the club now with, at the academy, uh, working alongside Robbo for six seasons now. Um, helped out briefly with the first team when when Barry Richardson left. Um, when we were in the in the championship, uh, working with Bobby and Joe, and. Uh, since since that time, I've worked alongside Jimmy Walker uh, with the first team, and, and happy to, to step up again and, and work there with Ben. You know, Ben's a great professional, a real leader in the dressing room, um, and, and a joy to work with day in day out, as I say. But but just to echo what the other boys have mentioned there, the, the two two young goalkeepers we've got working at the club. Uh, at the moment, are, are great prospects as well. Young Henrik, who has come over from Slovakia, didn't speak a word of English when he first came in. Um, was a boy that I found when I was coaching out there um, on behalf of the club, and he, he's come over not speaking a word of English. He, the, the, the boys will tell you his attitude spot on. He's been playing when we told him he was coming to the club. He was playing FIFA at home with Peterborough United so he could learn who the players were and what positions they played. Um, he's had an app on his phone to, to translate everything, so not only has he had to learn the way we want him to play, he, he's, he's, he's having to learn the language as well. He, he's been fantastic. And then young Dion again, I first stumbled across Dion when, when he was, was 14. Uh, he's a year younger than Henrik, but he's, he's really kicked on this season. Uh, there's, Lots of lots of people looking at him, and it's great. That he's recently been um, recently been recruited into the next England training camp for his age. And that, that's testament to what you guys are doing on the training pitch with these uh, players. Certainly, yeah. Um, the, the the whole ethos of the club has, has come through the the youth setup, and, and one of the things that that's been so so great in our transitional period is the way that. Robbo's transferred that mentality into into to what we're doing with the with the with the first team boys now, and they've <laughs> they've really responded to it. And I, I know I know he's sat by by my side there, but I know the boys were looking across at the training sessions and really wanting to to get involved in those when we were working uh, with the younger boys. Guys, we have any questions? Just to uh, Aaron and Grant here, just want to uh, offer you the more, um, more experience of the players and that we've got now. Uh, are you still expecting to play or are you just going to concentrate on uh, uh, the coaching side of the game? Um. Hello? Yeah. Um, no, I'm not.
concentrating on playing no more. Um, I'd rather concentrate on helping the boys that we've got at the club at the minute. Um, I went to Linfield um, two months ago, sorry, probably more than three months ago, to play till the end of the season. Um, but once uh, Rob will give me the call to come back, um, I came back. I didn't want to leave this club in the first place. Um, circumstances made me leave that, that I don't want to go into really. Um, but yeah, it's just nice to be back here now and hopefully help the boys kick on and, and hopefully we do get a bit longer with them because there's, there's some real talent here and they need to kick on. On, on that question really, uh, Grant, how, how difficult was it to let go of the playing side? Because you hear so many stories uh, about players after football, you know, the suffering, that some of them have the depression, etc. How difficult has it been for yourself to go through that situation? To be honest, it's been quite easy, really. Um, I think it's more more difficult when when you finish playing and you have to wait for another job and you have to wait for things to do and you're sitting about at home twiddling your fingers, wondering what you're doing, playing golf or doing whatever you want. But um, it's it's been really easy for me to, 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 to come back from Linfield, come back in here and help the lads. Um, it was quite funny, really, because I went and watched the the MK. I spoke to somebody here earlier on. I sat beside the MK Don's game and. I didn't think I was going to be in here the next day, you know, on a Sunday, but um, it's happened so quickly for me, really, and I'm just happy I'm back, really, and hopefully we can help the lads keep keep progressing on the football pitch and hopefully keep getting the results. And obviously, it's been disappointing in the last few weeks, but we will be we will get back to, to where we should be in the next in the next couple of games, definitely. Aaron, you're going through that transition now. How how difficult are you finding it? And I suppose you know you, you haven't completely let go yet, but I suppose that's going to be in the back of your mind. That's going to happen over the next few years. How uh, how are you managing that situation? Looking forward to it? Not looking forward to it? Well, obviously, looking at me, you, you wouldn't think that I'm as old as I am because I'm just got that baby. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, obviously, listen, this this wasn't something that I was looking at at this time. You know, I, I wasn't expecting to be to be in this position at, at this stage of my career. So, you know, I was, my my situation is a little bit different because I've still got a, a year playing contract after <coughs> um, at Bradford. You know, obviously. So, my my situation is totally different. Playing, I love playing. You know, and I still think that, that I've got a lot to give. So, in terms of that, you know, Robbo and and the guys are, are brilliant with me, and you know, I train every day. I do all the same sessions as the lads, and then I'm in the office with the with the guys and doing the doing the coaching and and the, you know the structure of, of how we're gonna how we're gonna train and stuff and how we're gonna play. So you know be, I'm I'm able to do it because I've got the guys here. It's it's easier for me. You know I suppose it's probably harder for them because they can't play and they can't play anyway anyway because their legs are gone. But, uh, <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's it's the transition for me at the moment is it's all learning for me. Like I say, all this is, is all brand new to me, but because of the type of person and the type of player that I've always been, whether I'm, I'm on the side or whether I'm on the pitch, I always try to try to lead the team. Anyway, I probably should have the armband. Anyway, but yeah, there'll be nothing on me doing that tomorrow. <laughs> but yeah, that's how I always am. So you know, being able to transfer that over to the lads and. Whilst I'm on the pitch as well, whilst I'm training, I can get into the lads and, and try and get over the messages that, that we're trying to put over. So, you know, for me, it's, it's pretty easy. Chris? Hi, uh, yesterday, Swindon didn't deserve the three points. We played really, really well, but it was frustrating that we couldn't get that ball in the net. Um, what's your answer to going forward? What do you plan doing, or is there a way? Is it lack of confidence still, or...? Uh, no, Chris, there's, to be fair, there's a number of ways that, that we're looking at, at dealing with it. Obviously, firstly, on the training ground with the players and, and continuing to develop the, the confidence in them to, to take their opportunities to score goals. Uh, not opportunities to shoot, opportunities to score goals because of um, the rest of their game we, we've developed over these, over these last um, 10 games. And, and I think they're in a really good place. Um, and obviously, at the game yesterday, I suppose... One of the things that a lot of people didn't see was was how good the, the fans were and the support for the lads. So they know that as well from, from the fans, that they're willing them on. And it's just a case of when those opportunities come, we're, um, we're continuing to, to work on their confidence, obviously work on their technique. They're all good footballers at the end of the day. We've seen that in the games and, uh, and giving them the confidence to take those, to take those opportunities. 
Um, we're looking at, at different partnerships, uh, different players. Uh, I know that you would have seen in the last two games there's been a change in formation to get more attacking players higher up the pitch, which um, for us and how we want to play and, and what we want to achieve as a, uh, as a management team with the, with the players is uh, that they have that attacking flair and um, it's there, it's just that final little bit of end product now and um, we're working hard on the training ground. I'll be working uh, constantly obviously with my selection and working with different partnerships and different pairings and, um, and see where that takes us. But um, hopefully, hopefully we're, we're not too far off of, the, of finding the solution and I think it's, it's one of those, I don't think it, it's too long in coming where we go out and give a team a real drumming uh, and we score uh, a hat load of goals um, and really, really, really um, put it on somebody. And um, But the lads, they wouldn't be able to do that without the rest of their game. Um, and their pressing defensively has been excellent. Their work rate has been excellent. Um, the pitch yesterday uh, meant that we could play the way that, that we wanted to play in terms of our passing and um, and our bravery and the willingness of the players to to want to get on the ball in different areas, um, and we just now need to get that final little that final little bit right in the final third, and I'm, uh, we're working on it constantly. Um, it's an interesting question because of obviously there's a uh, there's a there's a number of different there's a number of different things. But listen, for me first and foremost, I want this job. I love this football club. Uh, I want to be I want to be the manager here. Um, at the minute, I'm the academy manager, um, and I've stayed on that contract um, since since taking over. Um, and obviously the, the chairman's come out in his statement last week and, and said that I'll have an interview in May. And um, the bottom line for me is I want it, I know the club, I know the club inside out. Um, I feel I know what the needs are, the needs are of the football club. I know what the needs are of the players and that's what we're working on day to day. Um, so for me, I'm, I'm just focusing 100% on, on Peter United and doing everything I can um, to, get that, to get that job. And then if not, to obviously um, to, to develop the young players to get in the first team. So uh, I, I'm just staying focused on that and, and not really looking at my own situation at the minute because of it's in my hands with what we do over over the final running of these games. Questions? Anyone? Yeah, Mark. Um, you know, we talked about the Afternoon. Afternoon. Thanks for all you're doing. Anyway, I love the effort you're putting into it. Um, mine's a question about, it's a certain player, not somebody I hate, but uh, somebody who uh, think I love or hate. Um, Joe Newell, I think this season he's had a lot, lot better season than what he has. It's been more consistent, which is good to see. But I've seen him have games in the Championship where his uh, opposition couldn't deal with him. He just couldn't deal with him. And this season at times, a little bit frustrating. He's had games where take that man on, and he doesn't. He stops, turns, knocks it back. Is it a case of confidence with him? What, what, what do you think it is? What? Well, it's a, it's an interesting one. I, I can't obviously talk about what went on in the past because of I wasn't privy to that. But what I do know is I work with Joe as an under eighteen, and I know what he's capable of. He's um, an unbelievable footballer. He's got great technique. He's got fantastic quality. Um, and for us as a, a as a management team, what we have worked on with him since coming in is um, is encouraging him to be more positive, encouraging not to be direct, but to have more of an impact on the game. Um, and we're seeing him grow in that. We're seeing him develop that. Um, I know when he was a youth team player with us, I see him here um, do unbelievable against Aston Villa in the fourth round of the FA Youth Cup, where um, we've done a, a specific set of work with him, myself and David Oldfield, and uh, and it got the best out of him, and that was what led to him at the time getting his, his professional contract. So I know Joe, and and that's exactly what me and the team are working on with him to, to get that out, because of 
we do know, like what you said, when he's playing in the championship and he and he has that ability to be absolutely unplayable and uh, and teams can't get anywhere near him or deal with him and uh, and that's the Joe that we want in our team because if he can be he can be formidable when we get him playing that way. Well, I think, it's a, I think it's a really, really good question um, because since we've taken over, we had a look at the, um, at the average attendances because of, as a management team, we have to look at the whole football club and then obviously uh, preparations for next season as well. And that will have an impact on that because of the, the financial fair play rulings that, uh, that have kicked in and, and so on and so forth. But um, listen, the bottom line, we would love more, more people to come, to, to come in and uh, and for, for really this football club to be the hub of the community uh, where people can come, they can enjoy their Saturday afternoon. Uh, we are a family club. You look at the family day to day and, uh, and the amount of families in attendance I think is absolutely fantastic. But um, I know that, that Neil Gilby is doing some fantastic work locally with the schools and, um, and the media team and the, um, and the PR guys. So we have... We have a, a number of different communities, obviously, within Peterborough, and I think it's a case of hopefully we can try and tap into all of them and increase the attendances. But bottom line is I think people will come to, to watch uh, attacking football, and I hope that they do that and, and do that constantly because of, that's exactly what myself, the management team, and all of the players are, are, are aiming to do. And, and most importantly is, is success. We need... We do need success. Um, I think we took 20, 25,000 to, um, to the JPT final last year. Um, and I would like to see more of those return on a regular basis and, and come along and, and support the club, their local club, um, and really get behind the lads. And, um, and that's at home. But listen, also away, I have to say for me, in, in my games since I've been uh, the manager, is... The, the away support is absolutely phenomenal and I think if we can find a way where we can also create the atmosphere that, that the fans that do travel away create here at London Road, I think it'll um, it'll really get this place really get this place going and I know it does have it does have a direct impact on the players and uh, and they do feel that atmosphere when it's generated. If I can help with that question as well, it's uh, it's it's something that every single member of staff behind the scenes looks at every single day. Uh, for example, this season we've gone out to every single school in the uh, in the county, offering as far as Wisby, Huntingdon, um, and we're offering a pair of tickets to every single child at every single school to come to three home matches this season free of charge. So they can bring a, child, uh, they can bring a parent, a guardian, and believe it or not, out of, I think we've attempted, we've approached 30,000 individuals this season to come to games this season. So if you look over the motor point stands at every home game this season, all on the left-hand side, in fact, the Warsaw game, the whole stand was all schools. And believe it or not, you know we can offer out 1,500 tickets to a school, and only 400 of them will actually come. And it's and, and that's giving them out for free. And you know we go out to schools with players, with the management team, etc. And we're preaching to schools, you know, trying to you know prevent them from becoming armchair football fans, which a lot of youth today are doing it, you know, they're able to sit at home, watch it on Sky Sports for free, or for their parents, out of their parents' pocket for their subscription of Sky, whereas here you've obviously got to pay, you've got to come, you've got to buy food, and when you come in as a family, it's costing more, we are trying more and more things.
there's been like years where I mean, even when we were successful, the most we got was nine, ten thousand unless there was three get I'm talking championship successfully. Nine, ten thousand what was the maximum that we could get to the unit road tax back in the best and point right now. Um, it's just I don't think we can dictate every town. We've got a lot of people that aren't in the union that are in the people. Well, it's a very quick one. Well, sorry, um, and I absolutely agree with you on that. That it's it's a huge catchment area, and, and you, you you can think straight away where it's got to be price. It's got to be pricing, and believe it or not, it's not. I mean, the, for the Warsaw game, for example, we did uh, every under 18 would be a pound because we're paying adult, just a pound. So you know, you could be a student, you could be whatever, and you would just be paying a pound. And the uptake was very, very little. I mean, we've got our uh, ticket office uh, manager over there, or head of ticket, Chris Brewer, who will back me up on this. Uh, you know, we've, we've done deals where you pay just a fiver to get in, and it's uh, it, it doesn't make any difference on the gate. In fact, we lose money because the amount of policing that we have to have, the steward in, uh, the staff in, with the football club ends up losing money. So you're absolutely right. You know, you look at the price and you think, well, it is expensive, and yes, it is expensive to, you know, when you've got a game after a game after a game. But it's, it's trying to find a way of getting the local people to come to football. And you're absolutely right. I've got one more question. But we are doing something about it, are we? Howard, did you sign my son's ball? You're his favourite player. And you wasn't up there earlier. Yes, no problem. I'll sign him. All the, all the rest of the autographs and stuff afterwards. No worries. What, another question? The question that I'd like to know is that are Peterborough's um, performance going to get any better this season, next season, and are we going to start by scoring a lot of goals? Well, definitely. I think um, anyone who was at the game yesterday would be able to answer that in terms of the performance levels of the players. Uh, I also feel that. Um, we've gone through a couple of stages with this group of players and we've, uh, we've improved them. Uh, We've we done it in, in the way of playing a 4-4-2 and asking them to, um, to press and make it difficult for other teams and then asserting ourselves on the game. And uh, They've done that in the, um, in the first run of games that we, that we had with them and we're now encouraging the players and supporting the players to play with more flair and with more freedom and um, and asking them to, to spend some more time on the ball, to be brave enough to want to get on it. And the performances as a result of that are improving. Um, the bit for us as a management team is uh, we want to find that, that utopia of um, making sure that the performances are excellent, but also marrying up with winning games because of uh, by getting the right performance levels, we'll then get the right results and we get the right results and we'll bring the success back to the football club. So, um, yeah, it is. That's exactly what we're doing. We've got more attacking players playing higher up the pitch. Um, and uh, for me, the players are improving day by day, week by week. And uh, when we get that, we will definitely be getting the results that we need. Any other questions, guys? Oh. I don't, it's not so much a question, but I felt yesterday that we were playing at home with the sound and the noise and everything that our supporters made. I just wondered whether Swindon fans had turned up. <laughs> <laughs> we was we was looking for them as well. To be fair, the fans were were fantastic, and and uh, not only with the football that was played, it kept their fans quiet. But uh, to be fair, used the supporters that absolutely outsung them were brilliant. So listen, thanks very much, and keep that going at the away games. Yeah, I've got a question. Yeah, so when we're playing football, yeah, like all the players are playing, yeah, they're kicking it all the way up the pitch. No one else is getting it just for one player. So in fact, you just do um, soft balls, like not long, so not too long, but just pass it, pass it, pass it, pass it. When you got to the goal, it turns to shoot, shoot, and you go, you miss it. <laughs> so can you tell them not to miss it? <laughs> De definitely, we'll, we'll make sure we work on that training. <laughs> well, I think, you know, in answer to that, well, what he's, I think he's trying to say is, Kicking it up. Some fans are long shots, yeah. So, 
No, it's, but this is what you guys do day in, day out in training, isn't it? You're, you're trying to get the lads to, you know, do what you want them to do. But as soon as they pass that white line, it's down to them, isn't it? The thing is, I think we've scored the most goals from, from long range in this league this season. We encourage, we encourage the lads to, to shoot when there's a good opportunity. We don't want them to turn down shooting opportunity, but at the same time, you weigh up the situation. If I'm 30 yards out, I'm not going to shoot if someone's a better place. But if, I've, if, if it opens up for me and I feel confident in myself that, do you know what, I've got a, a good chance of scoring, then, then listen, by all means, have a shot. Not, by, not from 30 yards necessarily, but... Boyd has done that a few times, hasn't he? Unless you, listen, if you're Boyd, then you can do it. You can shoot from where you want. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, you know, we encourage the lads to, to assess the situation and try and give each other options. Give each other options all the time. So if you've got the opportunity to shoot, shoot by all means. If you're going to shoot, hit the target. You know, we work on it day in, day out. When we do the shooting drills, I'm non-stop. We're, work, we're making sure we hit the target. A percentage of, hit, of hitting the target has to improve. That's, that goes without, without saying. But I'd say that's the, probably the same for, for the majority of teams in, in every single league. You know, the amount of shots on target compared to off target in, in every single league is, there's a massive difference. But that's, that's our job to, to make sure that day in, day out, we work on it, we work on it, we work on it. And eventually, it becomes second nature. And then when you get the right opportunity, you know, nine times out of ten, you'll, you'll be able to, to make the keeper work. So, you know, we'll keep working on it and, and hopefully we'll, we'll see the rewards from it. Hi, my boy. Hello, mate. How are you? I'm good. Um, how do you do loan signings with Wade? Because obviously he's been to the club, yeah? I, be, I went to the Venom game against the, the boys went absolutely Bournemouth. Bournemouth. And I thought they played really, really well. Will there be any chance in the next four home games, or five, four home games, be away, to get inside? I think they've been absolutely exceptional. Yeah, the, the, the three loan signings that we bought in, we bought in um, at a key time because of the, the deadline date was closing. We couldn't sign any players after that, so we uh, we needed to have a look to make sure that we had the right cover that we needed throughout throughout the squad. Um, Alan Sheen's an exceptional footballer who came in as, as cover for us at, at left back and left sided centre half. And um, to be fair, Cosy and Gabby have been exceptional. I think you would all agree with that. Um, and James Pearson at right back, and, and obviously um, Michael Smith Smudge has been has been phenomenal. So um, they've kept their shirts and maintained their shirts, but we have got strong strong cover for them if if needed. Um, Luke Williams obviously uh, had a couple of couple of chances with us and played early on, um, but again um, Connor Washington in terms of his form yesterday, if he can continue to play. Um, constantly between now and the end of the season like that. Uh, that's the form that, that, that we want from Connor and we know that he's capable uh, of achieving uh, and he keeps doing that, he'll score goals, definitely. Um, and obviously Luke James is a, he's a hard working player but it was also good in that number 10 role I felt to, to give Marcus the opportunity yesterday and um, and he done well for 60 minutes. Uh, I felt he should have scored and he knows that. Um, but I thought Erhan had a massive impact in terms of in terms of creating more opportunities for those strikers as well. So um, listen, we've got strong players there, uh, but they they did come in to be fair to to cover the the squad that we've got. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, if or I should say, really, when you become the manager, uh, are you thinking? Um, well, currently, obviously, that's something that I'll be in discussions with the chairman about um, between now and the end of the season. At the end of the season, when he comes over, um, we'll have a look at the recruitment. But uh, the chairman will take care of that on the recruitment side of things. As a management team, we'll, we'll discuss with him what, uh, what we feel are the areas that, that need strengthening. 
Um, and then it, the, the chairman will obviously highlight that, we'll highlight some targets and, and so will he and then the decision will be made um, by the football club which way we go with that. But uh, the one thing that, that I do know is that with the team that we've got, the, the current squad that we've got, we've got a very, we, we've got a very strong squad I feel for this league. Um, adding a few more to it um, or, or making some changes because there are some um, some good players who, who listen could still um, move on into higher leagues at the end of this year and if that does happen then we'll also be looking to, to replace as well so uh, those are discussions that will be ongoing obviously there'll be no movement between now and the end of the of the season before the transfer winner opens so we'll have a, a, an opportunity to discuss that with the chairman when he comes over. Any other questions guys? Is that it? Oh, one more. So when it comes to the uh, next season of League One, are we going to try and push for uh, promotion back to the Championship? We're going to try and win it. That's what that's what we would want to do. At the end of the day, when we uh, if we got if I got the manager's job, we'll be aiming to win it and win the league um, because if that's what I'm about, and we'll be aiming to win it. Um, Playing an attacking style of play, scoring loads of goals with the uh, with the right players that that can excite the crowd and, and get this place going. That's exactly what we're about at PU United. So um, yeah, there'll be no talk of consolidating or just being happy. If I'm the manager um, and successful in getting a manager's position, then then we'll be aiming to win the league. Well, I hope you can get the manager's job because you're doing a fantastic job. You're doing a great job. Thank you. 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 Thank you.